welcome back to Zoo Creates. My name's Jessica and this is Christina here with me. And today we're gonna make a really fun craft called handprint fish. So Christina and I are gonna make fish out of our hand out of our hands. We're gonna put our, our paint on our hands. We're gonna make a handprint. Now we're gonna do fish if you want to get creative and come up with a different animal to um, paint. That is totally fine. Um, but we'll show you how to make a fish. So to start off, you just just need some sort of paint. You can use paint, you could use um, mud. Yeah, if you don't have paint at home and you have, you can go outside and get some mud and you're just gonna wanna get a paintbrush to get that mud or that paint or mud all over your hand. So I'm gonna make a pink fish. And if you're using mud, you can um, dye your mud different colors by using food coloring or um, if you have a little bit of paint but not enough to do your whole hand, you can always put a little bit of paint and just a little bit of mud and turn it different colors. That's always fun too. And you're just gonna spread paint all over your hand, just like that. I'm probably putting a little bit too much, but I'd rather have just a little too much than not enough. So you're gonna go all the way to the end of your hand. If you don't have a sponge, could you kind of just stick your hand in the paint? You could, that'll probably put a lot of paint on your hands, but you could do that. So you can use a paintbrush to get the paint on there, or you can just have fun and just squish your whole hand into the paint. I like Ooh, that idea. Pudding might make a really good paint too. You could, I mean, that's probably not gonna last very long, but I feel like that'd be really fun. Way More to marshmallow, uh, marshmallow. Ooh, yeah, peanut but butter, peanut all butter. sorts of things. Chocolate, melted chocolate, if you want to use food on. All right, and now when we put our hand on the paper, we're gonna keep our pinky and our thumb separate, and we're gonna not quite have our three middle fingers together, but we're gonna have them just barely spaced apart. So kind of like you're giving a really weird high five, okay? Ah. And then <laughs> you're just gonna stick him right down on the paper. My fingers didn't quite go all the way. All right, so there is my hand print, just like that. And if you have, like, I have a Mine really big, <laughs> yeah, I have a really big white space, so I may just touch that up with my paintbrush, but there is my hand print on there. And what I'm gonna do before I do any touch up is I'm going to use a wet wipe, but you can, of course, just run to your bathroom or kitchen sink and wipe off your hand. I may have a pink hand for a little bit, but I'll get the wet paint off. Paper towels would have been a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going to have a pink can and I don't even use pink. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but it's okay. We like to get messy here at the zoo. Yes, it's we do. Fine. What better job to have then? Paint. Right? Okay. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch up the middle of my handprint just a little bit just to fill it in. I think I might actually do that with crayons. Oh, that's a good idea too. So after your fish has dried, you can add I didn't some. have as much paint, so mine dried pretty quickly. There you go. <laughs> all right, so now I've got my hand print all done. And what we have here, so we have our fish, and this is his um, ventral t fin. This means it's the bottom fin that's on his belly. And this is his dorsal fin, or the top fin. And then my three fingers here will be his tail. That'll be his tail. And so what we need to do now, where do fish live? I think they live in the ocean. <laughs> they, they do, they live ocean, in the water, water yeah. Nice. And so we need to decorate and make a nice habitat for our fish. And so to decorate, you can use markers or crayons, colored pencils, whatever decorating material you want. I might add some bubbles coming up towards the surface for my fish and some really cool seaweed. This is where kids can get really creative. Are fish the only guys with those dorsal fins and other fins that you were talking about? No, so you can find uh, dorsal fins on whales and dolphins. Oh. So they are not fish, even though they live in the ocean. A lot of them still have those same fins that you would find on fish, but they are actually mammals, just like you and me. That is awesome. Yeah, what other kinds of things do you think you could find in the ocean with fish? I think jellyfish are pretty cool. I've seen or I've heard of some of those guys, lots of different types of jellyfish, uh, starfish, then turtles maybe? 
Oh, I think you could find some turtles. You'd find some sea turtles in the ocean. You gave me a really good idea. I'm gonna make some coral for my fish. So what exactly is coral? Can you tell me a little bit about coral? Coral is kind of like a animal, but more plant-like with the fact that they don't move a lot, but they do still eat, uh, they still eat food. Like we have some coral that like to eat uh, little fish pieces and then uh, there are sea anemones as well. Coral is, it grows a little bit here and there, but it's a very slow grower. So those coral reefs that you see, those are really, really old, which is why it's important to make sure that they stay protected and stay nice and safe. Um, but there are other, th uh, do you have anything else in coral? Um, I don't know a lot about coral, but we do have some coral yes. here at the zoo. In fact, so there's a lot of, the ocean is very sensitive. And so yes. there are some, coral um, are really important because they provide habitat to lots of different kinds of sea life, like fish and turtles, um, all sorts of things, sea cucumbers, the sea stars that you mentioned, all of that. Um, coral is really important to those animals, and um, coral is really sensitive to changes in temperature in the ocean. Yes. And um, there are, uh, are a lot of diseases or illnesses that can go through um, and, and hurt coral. And so um, there's some coral down in Florida that is actually um, has a, an illness going through it. Just like um, people get sick, coral can get sick too. And um, what Blank Park Zoo is actually doing is we brought in hundreds of those corals. Wow. So we removed the coral from the ocean and we brought it here to the zoo and we're taking really good care of that coral. So that way when it's when they're able to go back in the, when the water's safe for them, we're gonna put them back in the ocean and then they'll be able to repopulate and build a whole new coral well, reef, is which cool. is a really fun opportunity for them. I do know a little bit where if there are places that are having issues with coral, we can also make some man-made Places with for the animals that usually live in the coral, so kind of like a like a sunken pirate ship. Yes, kind yeah. of like a sunken pirate ship. So there are some colleges all over the coast of the United States that if they're a little bit low on coral, or if the coral there's something wrong and they're getting sick, but the animals that live in the coral still need to find a safe place. They'll put some uh, little blocks down there. They'll put hides. They'll make all these little homes for them, so then they can still have a place to live. Because coral is very important not only for our ocean but also for the animals in the ocean. Yeah. All right. I like how you're using crayon to add different colors to your fish. I'm gonna show you what my fish looks like. I'm not quite done yet, but I added some coral and some seaweed and lots of bubbles for our fish. And I'm also going to um, use some tissue paper just to add a little bit of texture in there. And then we have some salt that we colored. Um, and so it's just some Epsom salt that we dyed with food coloring. And we're, I'm gonna put a whole bunch of glue down here at the bottom and put some salt on our picture as well. Too. But if you don't have salt, you could also maybe use some dirt from outside. Yeah, you could use a little bit of dirt or if you have sand, like if you have a sandbox, um, you could always use that. Anything that is, or if you have play sand, my kids have some kinetic sand at home. That would work really well would too. Would grass maybe work to be like coral? Yeah, you could do that. That's a really good idea. You could use like some items from nature to uh, make your coral. All right. See how neatly I can do this. <laughs> Probably not very. May need a little bit of a plate underneath. Plate would have been a good idea, but that's okay. We can clean it up afterwards. Of course, we're gonna need to, once my paint dries on my fish, I'm gonna need to add an eye to my fish because fish have eyes just like you and me. Now, what are some special um, features of fish, some special adaptations they have? Because you and I can't live in the water, right? No, we cannot. I can barely swim. <laughs> Uh, one thing that fish have that we do not is they have gills. And so gills are those little things that you can see on the side of their heads. And that allows them to take the water and make it so they can actually breathe the water. They're not breathing, um, they're not breathing the water like we would breathe in air, but it allows them to be able to get the oxygen out of the water. That's what those gills kind of help them with. So oxygen is what we breathe in yes. when we breathe in air. Oxygen is what we get from the air. There's more than just oxygen in the air, but that's what we want when 
when we breathe. And so is there oxygen in water? There is oxygen in water. Oh. So those fish are using those gills and uh, taking that water and getting the oxygen out and that's how they're able to breathe down underneath water. All right. Those scales also are, that are something that would help them that would not help us a lot. Uh, if we were in the water for too long, we would get very pruney, we would get very <laughs> soft. Our skin is not really made to be in water all the time versus fish with those nice little tough scales on their body. That allows them to be a little bit more protected than our uh, skin would be. That's why a lot of people who dive and are underwater for a long time, they have those special little swimsuits. Okay. So if you've ever been to the zoo here, sometimes you might see our aquarists, which are the zookeepers that take care of our aquariums. They have a special name. You might have seen them dive in their yes. wetsuits. A re really fun activity to do while you're at home right now is to check out our um, webcam of our big giant reef tank that we have in the Discovery Center. You can see all of our fish swimming around there like Puff Daddy, our big puffer fish. He likes to make an appearance on there. Is it true we have a second puffer fish now? We do. We have a tiny little, I think he's called a porcupine puffer fish. Yes, because he's one of the spiky ones. Yeah, because so, puffer fish, they, they all, um, they of course get their name because they when they get um, scared, they puff up, they get really big and round. Um, but they all have these little teeny tiny spines on their, covering their body. Um, it's just really hard to see them on most of the puffer fish, but on our porcupine puffer fish, you can see the, his spines even when he's not um, puffed up into a big ball. And imagine if he was puffed up. <laughs> no, all those little spines would go everywhere. All right, I'm getting ready to add the eye to my fish. So I'm using a little jewel that we have here as a craft supply. Of course, not everybody has jewels at home, so you can always draw a picture of an eye on your fish, or you can use like maybe a button. A button might take a little bit more than glue um, to uh, attach to, to your picture, but um, you could use a button or you could also use, uh, uh, if, you ha if you're doing the food route using peanut butter for your glue, you could use like a chocolate chip. A chocolate chip would be good. That would be really cute. Or you can even just use a little piece of tissue paper to make your little eye. Right, I like, draw it on. Yeah, I like that you draw, drew, your, drew your eye on. All right, my fish, fish is just about done. My fish is getting more colors. All right, so I'll hold up my fish so you can see his nice, cute little habitat there. I've so got you my. Keep saying habitat. What do you mean when you say habitat? So a habitat is an animal's home, so where an animal lives. So like okay. a fish would live um, underwater. So like I drew a fish that might live in the coral reef. So the coral reef would be his habitat. The coral would be his habitat. So like if you've ever seen the movie Finding Nemo, um, the anemone was <laughs> yes, the anemone was Nemo and Nemo's dad's habitat. That's where he lived. Um, your fish doesn't look like it lives in a coral reef. He looks like he might live out in the open ocean. He likes his open area so he can be all pretty. <laughs> yeah, and some people have fish um, at home as pets that they have that they take care of, and so their fish tank would be their habitat. Okay. Yeah. I think I've had a, I had a fish in college, so my little fish tank for my beta, for my beta was his habitat. That would have been his habitat, and just like if um, we were drawing making handprint birds, we'd probably draw if it was a tree bird, we'd draw a tree because that would be his habitat, or if it was a ground dwelling bird, we draw okay. a little burrow for that bird to live in. Like some of the friends that we've met at other zoo creates, maybe they, if we drew our lizard from the other day, maybe she would be on the ground. Yep, exactly. So that's what we mean when we mean habitat. All right, now I think Christina brought an animal friend with us. Did you bring a fish today? I did not. That would be very hard to bring one of our fish over here. <laughs> All right, well, while you get our friend out, I'll clear our table off because she's going to probably want to crawl around, right? She probably will want to crawl around. Most of our friends are very curious and adventurous, so they like to explore all the new things. And when we have all these crafts, there is plenty to explore. <laughs> right. I will get my little lady who's been patiently waiting out. All right, so I didn't bring a fish, as Jessica said, but I did bring another animal that you could possibly draw or that you could uh, even paint with sometimes. And so this little friend is Donatello. She is an ornate box turtle. These guys can actually be found in Iowa. They are what is known as endangered. So with that, that means that there are not a lot of these guys out in the wild. Uh, their numbers have gotten so low that we are protecting them. We're making sure people don't take them out of the wild, and if you see one, you have to leave them alone. 
Momo. Now you called her an ornate box turtle. What does that, what does the word ornate mean? That's a really big word. That is a big word. So ornate pretty much means it's very pretty. And so if you look at her back on her shell, she has some very bright and unique colors that maybe other box turtles don't have. She also has some bright colors on her front legs and on her face. Uh, so ornate just means if you're comparing her to our other box turtles, she has a lot more designs on her. She's got a little bit more pretty uh, look to her shell. All right, so when we were making our fish pictures, we talked about how we might find sea turtles in the ocean. Yes. Is Donatello a type of turtle that you would find in the water? No, Donatello is not a type of turtle you would find in the water. Actually, she is one of the, uh, she and all the other box turtle species that they are, are the only box turtles that do not live in the water at all. These guys are going to be found on land. Typically, tortoises are the ones you would find on land all the time. But box turtles love their land. They will soak in water, but they won't live in water. They're not going to be like our uh, sea turtles or our sliders, those turtles that are going to spend most of their day in the water. These guys will spend most of their day uh, in forests and fields and all the little open areas of Iowa. Okay, and so I've seen pictures of sea turtles and I've even been lucky enough to see some sea turtles in real life and I've noticed that their feet look very different from Donatello's. Yes, So can do. you kind of talk about the difference between like a sea turtle's foot and Donatello's foot? Yes, I can. So most sea turtles are going to have what's called a flipper. Like if you've ever seen our harbor seals or our sea lions, they have flippers where their feet have been adjusted to kind of have webbing completely around their fingers. So that allows them to be able to swim really well. Well, when you have a flipper, you have skin all the way in between all those fingers, and so when you push through the water, that allows you to move yourself a lot faster. Versus Donatella here, she has uh, she has claws and she has kind of flat feet, more like an elephant would, except the claws are going to be a lot more like um, a lot more like a lot of animals that you see that maybe want to dig through the dirt. They need those claws to help grab that grab the dirt and move it. Okay, so she'd want to like dig a hole in the ground yes. to live she in. she likes to dig her hole. Um, she loves to bury herself, but if she can't bury herself and an, and an animal comes and startles her, the reason why box turtles have their name box turtles is actually they're the only turtle or tortoise that can completely close themselves in their shell. Awesome. Now, I've seen cartoons where turtles will, and stories where turtles will come out of their shell and like kind of wheel it around like a suitcase or a backpack. Can Donatello do that? No, Donatella cannot do that. Uh, neither can any other turtle or tortoise. So this shell is a part of their body. They're not going to be able to walk out of it. That'd be like us walking out of our skin. Would not work very well. Um, so if you ever see some turtles and tortoises have a very distinct kind of bump all the way down their middle, and that's kind of like our spine. If you feel along your back, you can feel our spine or your backbone, and that's what allows us to be straight. Yeah, she's very curious right now. <laughs> that's what allows us to be able to stand up straight and tall. She has it going all the way down her back, and then she also has her ribs all the way on the inside of her shell as well. So if you feel your stomach kind of like right here, you can feel your ribs. All of those bones are inside of their shell. They're going to be right there, uh, so they can't walk out because that would be like walking out without their bones, which would not do very well. Due to the fact that she is, or that uh, that shell's a part of her, that means that she can feel us every time that she is touched. Did you know that? So when you say feel, is it like if I were to just brush your arm, she could feel it like that, or is it kind of dulled a little bit? It's dulled a little bit. It'd be like if I touched your shirt versus your arm, where you okay. can tell that I touched you, but you can't, but it's not like touching skin to skin. If I touched her legs, that would be like touching skin to skin, where she can feel that. Uh, but that is the reason, since she can kind of feel it, some turtles do actually like their backs being scratched, just like dogs do. So like Barnaby, we know Barnaby, our yeah. really big tortoise that lives here at the zoo, he loves to have Back scratches. Oh yeah, he loves his back scratches and neck scratches just like a dog would. And so some turtles really get that little wiggle dance going when you get the right spot on them. All right. Well, thank you, Donatello, for coming and letting us learn a little bit more about turtles and for teaching us about turtles that live in the water. And thank you, Christina, for You're helping welcome. out today. We look forward to seeing you guys on our next Zoo Creates. In the meantime, if you have any questions about the stuff that we did today, need some ideas from some alternative craft supplies, we'd love to answer those questions. You can just put them in our comment section. Otherwise, you can also, um, we'd love to see your pictures, so go ahead and post the pictures of your completed fish or whatever animal that it was that you decided to make. We'd love to see those. And we hope to see you back here on Friday for the next Zoo Creates. Bye.